Your girl's gonna make you feel better about yourself because I too am banned from Kohl's. Hey guys, and yeah, yes, this works. Pink on pink is a great choice. Sorry about that. <laughs> So hey, welcome to today's video. This video is pretty random. I've never done anything like this before, but you know, I had a thought and I thought it sounded fun. So here we are. That's what I do now. I kind of want to every now and then do some like discussion forum style videos. And today I thought it would be fun if we all discussed the worst things we've ever done. I posted in my community tab. I literally thought 10 people were going to respond to it. There's 641 comments in response to the question, what's the worst thing you've ever done that you feel comfortable sharing? I perused through a few of them. I couldn't help myself. I tried to save as many as I could for today so I can like genuinely react. Some of the ones I read were like fun and like quirky and silly and some of them were like oh I killed a guy I'm just kidding no one killed a guy but some of them were serious let's see what terrible people you guys are the top comment is from heavy rain disclaimer I feel terrible about this I was pregnant and I couldn't help it I work as a respiratory therapist in a hospital and as I was in an unconscious patient's room giving them treatments and charting on the computer I had to fart really bad I already love where this is going. I let it rip. Not a minute later, a nurse comes in, is examining the patient and said, wow, it stinks in here. I wonder if he needs cleaning. As I helped the nurse check the patient, I fought back the urge to bust out laughing. Jim Carrey and Liar Liar. It was me. <laughs> That was a good one, thank you for that. All right, Allie, I was walking home from school at age nine, had to go to the bathroom so badly, like the type of bad that every part of your body is tense. Thanks for hating me, Derry. <laughs> I'm nervous. I couldn't run because I would have for sure crapped my pants. So I did a sort of clinch, brisk like walking until I got to my driveway. I hid behind my mom's car. <laughs> I did the only thing my brilliant nine-year-old brain could come up with. I pulled my pants down and well, you know, right there behind my mother's car in the driveway. Okay, the, fa <laughs> the fact that you were nine makes it okay. If you were 39, we would maybe have to talk about it a little more. A short time later, my poor disgusted mother found said poop press and I, without shame, blamed it on our dog Gizmo. Yeah, always blame the dog for anything gross. Like if you accidentally chew up a new shoe, say it was the dog, you know? I did it all the time. Let's hear from Lauren. I was at a company picnic and a woman that I knew from corporate was there with her husband who was a manager of mine. I hadn't seen her in a while and I ran up to her all excited because she was very pregnant and the moment I got to her I hugged her and then went straight to her belly, held her belly in my hands and said when the heck are you going to come so I can finally meet you to which she responded he's right there. Oh. Oh, look, I'm not judging any of you, okay? I'm not here to judge any of you. I just wanna say, Lauren, he broke the cardinal rule. When in doubt, never assume a woman is pregnant. You learned your lesson, I don't have to preach to you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. I like the last sentence, I'm a monster. No, you're not a monster, you're just a silly goose. I signed up an ex to receive hair regrowth treatment ads in literature because he was morbidly afraid of his thinning hairline at 25. Not emails you can block, but physical mail you have to deal with and phone calls for months. Wait, did he ask you to? Or you just like did it on your own volition? Honey, you don't want to go bald? Well, here's some snail mail. This one's from Nicole C. I was seeing a guy. I told him I wasn't interested in anything serious as I had just gotten out of a long-term relationship. One day, we're hanging out at my house and he hugs me while saying, I think I'm falling in love. And I replied with, I think it's time for you to go home. <laughs> he broke up with me that night by blocking me on Facebook. No! <laughs> Not the Facebook block. That's almost as bad as like removing you from the MySpace top eight. I did something kind of similar to a guy in high school. I feel bad about it, but at the same time, like when you're a young teenager, that's not what you want to hear, you know, it's too soon. And I remember him messaging my best friend and being like, I got moved all the way back to the bottom of her list. And the list was my MySpace top eight. What a time to be alive. My mom passed when I was nine and dealing with the nature of it, you grow a morbid sense of humor. A year later, I was at a girl's slumber party and I had them freaking out that my mother's ghost was by the lamp in the corner of the room, LOL. <laughs> I like the LOL. She asked me why I don't think my intention was to be mean, but the mom was not happy. The rest of the slumber party went well though, but one girl kept asking me if my mom was there <laughs> in the room. <laughs> I get it, I had a dark sense of humor about stuff that happened to me too, and other kids don't, and so you just end up kind of being the weird one. Kids just, they cope with things weirdly sometimes. Demetrius, I think you're normal. At an old job, I was closing up the store with my coworker. A car pulled up right at close, and I said, oh geez, this meth head looking lady is trying to come in. My coworker said, that's my mom. Misty, 
You're getting a heart for that one. Oh God, all this meth head looking lady. I kind of relate to that. I don't think I ever said anything about anyone's mom, but just like when I was a hairstylist, the first salon I ever worked at was like a walk-in salon. People would come in right before clothes and we would always just be so mad. It didn't matter how wonderful of a person, they were a meth head in our eyes. <laughs> when I was a kid, I went into an almost finished house under construction, went up into the attic and then fell through the ceiling, ran away and pretended it never happened. I'm glad you ran. I'm glad you didn't, you know, lose a leg. Better off red. I know this one's gonna be good. When I was in high school, I found a textbook in the bathroom that belonged to a girl that was mean to me. I put it in the toilet and flushed it a bunch of times. I ended up sitting next to her in another class the next semester and overheard her telling her friend that she failed a class because she lost the textbook and refused to pay for it. I feel bad for the custodian that had to fish the book out of the toilet. <laughs> yeah, y'all don't think of custodians. Y'all don't think of custodians, okay? I went to school with this girl named She's a couple years older than me. And she, for her senior prank, she wrote on the wall, seniors rock. And you know what? I shouldn't include that story. I asked my friend if I could run in her gated community as it's so shady and nice in there. She put me on the list and 10 minutes into my run, I had to go number two. It's on a golf course that has also some natural desert landscape. I found a spot and went like the animal that I am. Wiped with a rock. Oh, howie. All right, this one's from Liz. Around 2005, I was hanging out with a new friend group outside of school for the first time. A guy said something that was just the perfect setup for a yo mama joke. I'm nervous. I couldn't help myself and I made it. Everyone looked at me horrified. His mom had passed the year before. I'm smiling because it's just uncomfortable. We're all cringing together here. I choked out an apology and ran from the room in shame. We are still friends. Hey, I'm so, I'm so glad you're still friends. Yeah, with your mama jokes, you just never know. You gotta be careful because someone could be really sensitive to it or someone could be like Demetrius. Dark sense of humor and be like, oh, my mom's over there. <laughs> the only person you should ever tell a yo mama joke to is your sibling. A few days before my mom's birthday, when I was a sophomore in high school, me and one of my friends had been going to the mall or anywhere for that matter and would steal like clothes, makeup, things we liked. I know it's bad, but what we wanted we couldn't afford because we hadn't gotten jobs yet. <laughs> I didn't have a job. What do you expect? Not that it makes stealing okay, cause it's not. We went to a Kohl's, got a bunch of makeup and candles, some clothes and put it in our purses and walked out. Loss prevention ran after us once we exited the store. My mom had to pick us up or we would have to go to the police station and get taken care of there. My mom was so upset and crying. I still feel bad about it and cringe thinking of stuff like that. Well, your girl's gonna make you feel better about yourself because I too am banned from Kohl's. It happened when I was 14. I was with my cousin and I stole a necklace and I took the tag off and I put it in like a jeans pocket. <laughs> Why do kids do that? You need something that bad that you're willing to risk. Kids just have no foresight. I didn't have a job. I scrubbed the inside of my ex-boyfriend's streaky toilet with his toothbrush after I found out he had another girlfriend more than once too. I did it every time I went back to see his sister. I love the part of the story that says it was a streaky toilet. It wasn't a regular toilet, it was a streaky toilet. That is the ultimate revenge. Katie C says, I can't believe I'm even writing this, but I'm a different person person than I was 16 years ago. It was my first job, Dairy Queen, and my manager made me mad. She was seriously crazy. After she upset me one night, I took the lid off the back tank of the toilet. I proceeded to poop in the day. <laughs> so every time someone flushed the toilet, a disgusting cascade of diarrhea water filled the toilet. Bro! <laughs> I did not expect so many poop stories. I mean, I like them. Katie, I love how you ended this with I'm not proud. I don't know, maybe you should be. I have Crohn's and I accidentally pooped myself while waiting a table. Dude, that sucks. I swear I'm not laughing at you. You know I'm laughing, you know I'm laughing because I relate. I didn't poop myself at a table, but I have colitis and so I just get it. I let them think the stink was their own kid. <laughs> I mean, what other option is there at that point? You can't be like, hey, my name is Jamie. Welcome to Chili's. I'm gonna... I'm sorry, I just pooped myself. Let me go back into the kitchen where your food's being prepared and I'll be right back. <laughs> You did the right thing. Okay, I can't read any more poop ones, you guys. We'll save the rest of the poop for next time. All right, Samurai Mama says, when my Sunday school teacher asked me where the stapler was, I replied, up your butt. <laughs> the Sunday school teacher? Up your butt and around the corner to the Sunday school teacher? That's something you say to a gym teacher. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My gym teachers were mean because I like wasn't athletic and couldn't run the mile and wouldn't stop eating cake during soccer. <laughs> I watched the new Cinderella movie from Amazon all the way to the end. Oh, that's the 
What a terrible person. You're the worst one. I'm just kidding, I wanna watch it too. Everyone's telling me to. When I was 16, I dumped the entire contents of a trash can into the open sunroof of my ex-boyfriend's car. Man, dude, I remember. I get it, you're that mad. You're that mad as a teenager. On the elementary school soccer field as a kid, a friend asked me to guide her around as if she was blind. Her lashes were fluttering and I suspected she was peeking, so I walked her toward a goalpost. She wasn't peeking. <laughs> Is she okay? Nanette says, ugh, I feel so bad for this as an adult. When I was in my late teens, my boyfriend cheated on me. I carried a can of tuna and a can opener in my bag for nearly two weeks. I pierced the can enough to get just the liquid out. I dumped a bit under his car seats in the front. It was summertime. There is no better revenge than tuna water. I gotta hand it to you. I never thought like that. Like my boyfriend cheated on me in high school and my only thought was to like scream and cry and lose my mind. I did call his mom. I did call his mom, but I never thought of this creative stuff, like tuna water and trash cans and poopy toothbrushes. Sylvia Barger says, I stole a peanut from the grocery store when I was five and I honestly haven't recovered since. <laughs> Sylvia, it's okay. It was just a peanut, a peanut. If you stole a whole bag, yeah, like you deserve to go to jail, but a peanut, you were a kid. I peed in my ex-boyfriend's mouthwash. I, here's something I wanna know about you guys doing this with the toothbrush and the mouthwash and everything. Don't you want revenge that the people are gonna know about? Again, I'm not judging you here, but I'm, I'm curious. Like, I don't think I would feel better about getting revenge if the person didn't know I got revenge, you know? In fourth grade, I stole my Uncle Max's toupee and I glued it on my face when I was Moses in my Hebrew school. <laughs> oh man, thank you, Corey. That might be my fave. Toupee, that's not a word I hear every day. When I was four back in the 90s, I was a klepto at my preschool. <laughs> sentence I've ever heard. I just picture this girl in prison, someone being like, what are you in for? Manslaughter, what are you in for? I was a klepto at my preschool. I fell asleep cutting a friend's bangs in elementary school. <laughs> what? Explain that one to me. Were you just so concentrated that you were like, Okay, there's so many I can't read anymore, but you wanna know one of the worst things I've ever done? I'm not just gonna put you guys on blast. So one time in high school, I parked my car at this party and my tires were like halfway off the road, kind of in like a little ditch. And so when we went to leave, we couldn't get my car out. Like the tires were just spinning. I was in the driver's seat and I had it in neutral and my friends were pushing. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get out and help them. So I got out of the car that was still in neutral and I gave it everything I had and it worked. And it went sailing down the hill with the door open and the door was like skidding across the gravel. Of course, nobody was in the driver's seat because I got out. So my open door hit a tree and like bent backwards. My friends had to like rig it up with a seat belt. It was bad. I drove it home. I spent like the whole night cleaning it up literally with a rag. I think my friend's dad even helped me. Yeah, we got all the dirt and scratches off us. So it just looked like I was brand new. So there was no possible way I was gonna tell my parents this. A, because I had messed up my car, but B, I was not supposed to be at this party. I was supposed to be like staying the night at my friends. I drove home the next morning. I pulled over on the side of the road. I worked up tears and I called my mom and said, someone hit me. The cops came and I lied to the cop. And I was like, yeah, I just like pulled over and I had to adjust my door. And like when I opened my door, someone drove by and bent my door backwards. <laughs> Everybody believed me except my stepdad. Can't get nothing past him. He was like, uh, I don't think that's what happened. And I was like, oh, so you're saying I'm lying? Oh my God. The links I would go to, man, to keep things from my mom. Anyway, they all accepted it. And then my sister told on me like 10 years later. <laughs> they all kind of knew. I don't know, I guess technically that's not the worst thing I've ever done. It was bad and I'm not proud. If I told you the real worst things I'd ever done, it, this would be a very dark video. So what do you guys think? Did you have fun? I had fun. Feel free to leave more hilarious confessions on that community tab post or look out for the next one. It'll be a different topic. Thank you friends for your participation and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!